right. Well, we'd like to welcome you back to another Sui Generous episode Whoa. of V8 Radio. How about that? I am impressed. Yeah, I'm kind of confused, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm Kevin Osti, joined as always with my esteemed co-host, Mr. Mike Cuball Clark. Mm-hmm. And you're saying, what the heck was that all about? <laughs> I, I I thought you like had a, like a like a conniption real quick or something. <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, we try to oversell this show as much as we can, and um, it turns out that uh, you know each each opening we have some kind of silly word, and uh, I've been slacking a little bit the past couple episodes. You know, you've been picking up the uh, the task of coming up with the overselling adjective. <laughs> so this time I actually spent eight seconds and came up with one. <laughs> well, right on. Yeah, it's Sue I generous. Wow, you're really putting the homework in for the show. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, it's Latin, and the and the listeners appreciate that. Yeah, I'm sure he does. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Latin term, Mike, and it uh, literally means of its own kind. Ooh, of its own kind. Yeah, that's different. Well, it's kind of it walks the line there. It's not saying it's good or bad. <laughs> It's unique. That's right. How interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, you like my new haircut? Yes, it's uh, sui generis. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you pay real money for that haircut? Yeah, that's right. So uh, the other traditional thing we do, now we got traditions. You believe that? Look at that. Well, we've been doing, it th- doing this a while, so... Is the uh, the trivia question as an attempt to uh, to lure our listeners into sticking around longer than they already have? You know, hopefully that's right. It's <laughs> our attempt at subterfuge. Right, that's, <laughs> that's a good word there too. Right, well, dude, dang it, I wasted it. Uh, so, do you have a uh, a trivia question prepared? Indeed, I do. Indeed, I do, my friend. Hmm. Um, you know, you've been pretty good to me in the past, uh, coming up with some Pontiac trivia questions and uh, oh, here coming up a- with probably more than our fair share of Pontiacs on Muscle Car of the Week. So I thought I would return the favor and question. give you a Buick <laughs> question. Call that one. Yeah. Oh, n- so, nice. And here we go. In what year did Buick introduced turn signals as standard equipment oh come on really yeah come on buick uh, i guess this is no worse than the first year for tilt steering yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> paybacks my friend paybacks uh i'm gonna say you know because buick being kind of a slightly higher line car that it was probably an early adopter of standard equipment mm-hmm. uh, uh turn signals that's, that's- that's fair to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that, uh, believe it or not, on my 62 Ford, they were, well, turn signals were standard. Reverse lights were not. Right. Uh, turn signals, I'm going to say probably the late 40s as standard equipment on a Buick. I'm going to say 1947. 1947. Yeah. Says the man in Redbud, Illinois. That's my guess. I didn't say it was right. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And depending on how it goes, I may or may not yeah, tell you yeah, it's right yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all right. right. Well, all right. all right. Well, I've got one for you. And I actually had a Pontiac question, and I thought, you know what? Much like you did to me, if uh, which I did to you first, if a, uh-huh. uh, you know, you got your favorite brand, and if you blow the trivia right. question, it you know, makes you feel like less of a man. So. <laughs> <laughs> about your brand so i passed on my pontiac really? question oh man and i'm moving on to a uh, a general which you know in reality could be a pontiac question mm-hmm. so okay, okay. uh in what year what year was the first american 400 horsepower v8 engine advertised Ooh, in what year yeah. the first the first american for 400 horsepower engine advertised. V8. V8. The first yeah. 400 horsepower V8. Oh, gosh. Okay. Well, we're probably talking about the muscle car era. It would have to be a pretty mm-hmm. substantial engine size. Mm-hmm. 
Um, you see how I, you like how I'm doing that time waster? That's what I'm you got to do. From, I'm I'm learning from the master. I'm just <laughs> yeah. going through it in my head here. <laughs> well, it helps frame context, you know, for your yeah, answer. exactly, exactly. Um, so we're talking muscle car wars. Um, uh, four hundred horsepower. Mm-hmm. Kind, kind uh, of a kind of a milestone. Yeah, definite milestone. Um, I don't suppose you would let me know if this engine surpassed the one horsepower per cubic inch level uh, as well. Well, would you? N- n- uh, I'm actually not because I see what you're trying to do there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to narrow the field a little well, bit. Yeah, because if it does, then it's bigger than 400 cubes. Then you can go, well, well I know sure. when these were made and blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. nah, I can't. Uh, All right. All right. Well, I had to try. Okay. What year? I'm going to say 19... Mm-hmm. 19... S- 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 70. Yes. 1970. You got a snake over there or, or an air leak or something? I'm... Yeah. No, not, not... You know what? I take that back. It's going to be ni- 19... Yeah, you better think about that. 65, 1965. Any idea what it was? Um, 400 horsepower even. It's not a Hemi. <coughs> it, it, um, Did, who, who said it's not a Hemi? I mean, I'm just asking. Well, it's not a 426 Hemi because they were 425 horsepower advertised. Right. Right? Um, unless it's a 392 Hemi. But no, that was that was... Those that's modern stuff. I'm sorry. Um, well, 392s were. Uh, well, I'm, I'm not supposed to be feeding you information. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're trying Ooh, to do here. I almost had it. I almost had it. Uh-huh. These, uh, uh, these allergies here got me off my game a bit. I think. Right, right, right. Uh, I'll say it's the four tw- Chevy 427. The Chevrolet 427, mm. and you yeah. and you're sticking with 1965 as your year. Yeah. That's what you said before. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, what, that 427 mystery motor was, well, that was a racing motor, uh, right? Uh, it wasn't huh. that in 65? Oh, I don't know. Or, <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> no, it was actually, no, it had, it, the 396 in the Z16 Chevelle came out in 65. Uh-huh. Um. I'm just God. I'm all over the place on this. I I, I gotta just narrow it down. Sixty five, four twenty seven. That's it. That's Close the books on that. Final one. answer. Final answer. All right. Well, that's what we. Uh, that's what I typed into my little notepad here. It was nineteen sixty five Chevrolet four twenty seven. All right. All right. All right. Well, at least we got the agony out of the way. Yeah. Well, for us now, now the rest of the show is <laughs> yeah, for the listeners. The listeners, <laughs> listeners' agony is just beginning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh man! So that, <laughs> so that. Speaking of agony, uh-huh. you know what I'm going to say? Oh, uh, any update from the machinist yeah. on the Mike Cuball no, Clark 60 I, GTO I, project? I called him today, and I left. I got a voicemail. I left him a voicemail. It's it's gonna take me going to a shop and just seeing what's up for, for me to get any real answers and possibly making arrangements to take that engine out of there if he's if he really feels he's not gonna be able to get it done part, in a quote timely fashion. Part of me thinks that um, so if you recall the movie Pulp Fiction and mm-hmm. Pulp Fiction they uh, you know the the mulligan if you will it's a it's a a device used by filmmakers to keep it interesting all the way through. The mulligan is the mm-hmm. box, the, the case that's got the, the thing in it. And right. You don't know what the thing is. And mm-hmm. then they open the box at the end and you still don't know what the thing is. Right. And I, I kind of think, you know, we'll do this via radio for years and the mulligan's going to be your Pontiac <laughs> engine. <laughs> oh, come I'm, on, I'm, I'm hoping man. not. <laughs> I'm hoping not too. <laughs> but it's like, oh, we'll be uh, 84 years old and say, hey, so have you heard from the guy? <laughs> <laughs> they outlawed gasoline 40 years ago. Right. <laughs> uh, it is It is turning into a mulligan, isn't it? Well, <clears throat> hopefully you can uh, pull the pull the reins in and 
Yeah. As we discussed last time, feel free to tune in our previous episode for uh, mm-hmm. options on what Mike can do. <laughs> and feel free to comment. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On well, the we'll, v- let, we'll V8 let... Radio Facebook page or the right. V8 Radio.com website, uh, anywhere you like. That's right. Well, we'll leave that leave that alone. Mm-hmm. So, what else is happening? Because you know, I did all my show prep already. You know, I figured out Sue I Generous, and that's wow. that's as far as it wow. went. <laughs> right on. <laughs> Came out of the gate real strong, like an we overachiever. Are knocking it out of the park, Kazansky. <laughs> oh boy. Um, what is happening here, dude? I tell you what, the weather has just been ridiculous. It's still car heaven out here. Yeah. I'm sure it is by you too. Oh, it was like 95 degrees out here today. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I've been driving my 70 Riv a lot and it was like, you know, hot in the car. It was a non-AC yeah. car. Non-AC car. Uh, Kelly and I drove the Galaxy over the weekend. That was fun. Top down. Sweet. Yeah. I looked at my GTO for a while. Yeah, did and, you? Yeah, yeah. Walked around. I'm like, oh, someday, someday. You know where it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. Well, we just got back from a, a long week of shooting a whole new season of Muscle Car of the Week. Sweet. So that was fun. I'm sure that was fun. Any, uh, any uh, little, uh, little spoilers as to what might be coming around? Uh, a bunch of cars. I can tell you. Yeah, that. is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, aren't you helpful? Well, part of it is it's just such a blur. I mean, and I don't know if we've yeah. touched on how we shoot Muscle Car of the Week on previous episodes, but that process, we have to travel to get there. And mm-hmm. to maximize the efficiencies, uh, we end up shooting a lot of cars a couple times a year. And <clears throat> we'll give the little, you know, kind of behind the scenes look at, at how we do this. The Muscle Car of the Week episode, you know, we publish a new one every week, mm-hmm. um, but they're they're made week by week to a certain degree. So we go out and we shoot all the video of the cars and we shoot the, you know, we call the stand-ups where I stand there and try to sound smart, you know, about a particular car. And, and that's all we shoot. And then the words that go in between, that's what we do every week. Um, so we kind of hit the high oh. points when we're out there and say, you know. For example, uh, last week's car was that 71 Trans Am, the blue, mm-hmm. Lucerne blue car. And when I was on site, um, I didn't have to know every detail about the car because we just did three or four stand-ups saying, you know, here it is and this is that. Oh, okay. And then we shoot a ton of footage of it and drive it around and all that stuff. Sure. And then I go back and kind of go through the footage and, you know, learn about the particulars of the car and kind of write some notes and do the rest of it. So... When we shoot these cars, you know, I try to become, I write some notes and try to become an expert on two or three things of each. You know, I I don't have to be the expert on the entire car just because we just don't have time. Right. So over the course of uh, basically four shooting days, uh, we shot 25 cars. So Holy cow. Yeah, it's a lot. It's That's that's half the year pretty much. We do it twice a year. So Oh my goodness. Yeah. And uh, that's a busy week. It is a very busy week. And it, it's a great thing that we use a, a very small crew, but they're but they're heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben, our in-house cameraman and editor comes out and then we hire a guy that I used to work with uh, on Hot Rod TV a million years ago. When I left L.A., he stayed and, and this guy actually does movies and, and real stuff. But nice. he and I are buddies, and it's kind of a twice a year reunion where we get to hang out. And he kind of, uh, you know, lends his uh, steady cam abilities and stuff to our little production. You know, cool. We 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 pay him to do it, but it's all you know equal parts kind of favor and fun. So, right. And uh, and he's great. His name is Evan, and he's uh, he's car guy, and he used to shoot Hot Rod and Motor Trend and some motorcycle stuff out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he, he kind of directs the whole operation and uh, tries to help me not, you know, really screw up a lot on camera. But as you've seen the outtakes, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. Once, once it happened once. once. Yeah, once it happened, yeah. Uh, one of the challenges of shooting this show is uh, getting out there. So we, we pick the cars in advance. Um, the team at the Brothers Collection has given us 
carte blanche access to the whole deal. So Mm -hmm. they, uh, they're very helpful. There's two guys that, that handle the cars on their end. Right. And if you can imagine, so today we're, we're on episode 221 coming out this week. So that means so far it's 110 cars per guy. (laughs) 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 <laughs> <laughs> and not the same car twice yes right to keep keep a handle on and and that's a daunting task um plus it's not a situation where the cars are all sitting in one room and they're all ready to go and you know they just got to put gas oh, in yeah. or something they're in different facilities oh. and things get moved around and uh, and over this past summer they uh they've been making progress on the museum building, which uh, eventually will open to the public in some, some capacity. And right. uh, they moved quite a few cars into that facility, which required, um, well, four weeks of uh, car hauling to get wow. cars moved. Yeah, and that was transporting them and driving some as well. Um, so they've been just super, super busy. So they can usually tell me, you know, hey, we got this and we got this and this one runs and this one looks pretty nice. Mm-hmm. And and I might go backwards and say, well, I have I have a photograph of, you know, this orange AAR Cuda or something. And they'll be like, oh, mm-hmm. yeah, that one's got a dead fuel pump or uh, oh, that one's out at the restoration shop and, you know, it won't be back or whatever. So once we land on the cars of opportunity, I'll I'll call them. Those guys jump into action to make sure that they are going to function. And then uh, my challenge is to make sure that muscle car of the week is not the same show every week. And, and we've done numerous cars that are similar. Uh, For example, Mm -hmm. AAR Cuda is a great one because most of those cars, um, they have, they have a good supply of them in the brothers collection. And generally, the only differences between AAR Cudas is the color and if they are automatic versus stick. Pretty right. much everything else is kind of the same on those cars. Okay, uh, I got gotcha. you. Except for per- perhaps, uh, uh, you know, the story behind it, you know, like what who owned it or, you know, did it do something sure. spectacular. Right. So what I try to do is I have a grid and, and I um, arrange the cars. Uh, it's kind of a, it's an online spreadsheet that automatically assigns a color to each cell and it'll do the vehicle color. And then it'll Mm -hmm. also do like blue for, for Chevrolet and Brown for Pontiac and pink for Ford or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I can see, and and then the year changes colors, 67, eight, nine, whatever. So in a glance, I can see that I might have two lines of the spreadsheet that are the same color next to each other. That means Uh I got to move them. So that oh wow every week it's not the same manufacturer and it's not the same color generally oh, wow so I don't think we've done like two red cars in a row from multi makes and we haven't done okay. like you know two Dodge Chargers in a row kind of thing so 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 what you're telling me is that you actually put a lot of thought into this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, the show is rather <laughs> sui generis, so I try yeah. to. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like, like this show <laughs> that you put t- countless hours into prepping, you probably do even more so for Muscle Car of the Week, is what I'm hearing. Well, yeah, and what you're hearing though, <laughs> you know, before you. Uh, get too high up on the horse there uh, <laughs> what you are noticing is that i've been able to automate that process so i don't have to think <laughs> <laughs> the spreadsheet just figures it all out oh and then that I was go, just oh. too good to pass up too good to yeah, pass I, know, up. I know i know so if we come up with a so, way to put colors on on va radio episodes you know I won't do the oh. brown show twice in a <laughs> twice in a row. <laughs> Every show is brown. <laughs> oh boy, that could be a T-shirt for us. <laughs> yes. V8, That's our show, V8 Radio. Radio. Every, Every show, show is brown. brown. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So anyway. Anyway, we like to. Uh, I digress. Yes. So not only do we know, you know, kind of the 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 intricacies of color and make a model when we're out there shooting them, um, 
bright colored cars present a challenge uh, because you don't want to, you know, shoot a white car in direct sunlight outside, you know, in the middle of the day kind uh, of thing. Sure. And sure. if you got a black car, you don't want to shoot it inside because it might be too reflective or whatever. Mm-hmm. So uh, we have definitely a, um, a formula that I, I let Evan, our a camera and director guy mm-hmm. i let him figure that out <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. well he's far smarter than i am at this kind of stuff no that's impossible yeah, yeah, yeah. believe it or not so um <laughs> he he uh he kind of comes up with how we're gonna strategize all that and then uh uh-huh. ben our in-house guy is just he's just a a, a rocking machine i mean he can he mm-hmm. can shoot for days and days and days and days and not get yeah. tired or not let on so uh he gets yeah. the uh, the glorious task of shooting all the detail shots of the cars and and the walk arounds and stuff with his gimbal camera mm-hmm. and all that kind of jazz. So um, gotcha. it's I a gotcha. finely a well oiled machine. Um, and we did have two of them that that fell out on site. Two cars that dropped out. Uh, oh. One lost a fuel pump, uh, so we didn't get to do anything with it. Uh, ah. But that car will come back. Another one, mm-hmm. interestingly enough is a um and I don't I don't want to get too far into what it is but it's a uh right uh, a, a pretty documented um Shelby car that at the last minute was discovered to perhaps not be the correct color and oh. and not only does that you know look if you look at your GTO and you look at your trim tag and you say it's supposed to mm-hmm. be you know gold and, and in fact mm-hmm. the car's orange or something you know there's a discrepancy right. there Mm-hmm. Uh, but this one might have had some alteration to the tag too. Oh, so the tag matches the color on the car, but right, uh, the registry suggests that it should be different. So uh, they oh, wow. they put the brakes on that one and said, "Well, you know what? Before we tell this story, we're going to get to the bottom of it, and knowing those guys, right. it's going to be corrected next time I see it. You know, with the right color on the car or whatever." Yeah. Because they've got cars in paint shops and in rest- restoration shops all over the country at any given time. So, yeah. That would, yeah, that would be a pretty interesting tale to tell on the show about the history of that and what happened and how it happened. And Yes, yes. And what it, what, it, what it really is. You know, unfortunately, I think um, they might have ended up with that car, and I can't say with any certainty. And, and when you're dealing with cars at that level – you can't just kind of BS about them because, you know, we're talking about significant dollar cars. <laughs> right. You know, if it's a green Pinto that's supposed to be orange, you know, whatever, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But when you, deal. and that's part of the pressure and the challenge is to tell the story that's accurate because somebody might look at one of our videos one day and take that as the legitimate story of the car as they're selling it. Uh-huh. And somebody might spend more or less based on that information. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I, I got to try hard to get as much right as I can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, sometimes, you know, we'll, you know, I, I'm the first guy to admit if I screw up a, a, a cubic inch displacement mm-hmm. on an engine or a year or something, something that's easily verifiable. Right. You know, kind of to that make sure. or model. But when it comes to the actual story of that particular uh-huh. car, that's when the details really have oh, to matter. Sure. So, yeah, yeah, you're putting it out there as part of the record, so yeah, you definitely, yeah, you definitely right. want it to be right. Yes, we try real hard yeah. for that, and w- w- we did a story a while back about a Cobra that we shot it the first time, and it was red, yeah. and we had to go back and finish a shot on it. The yeah. car was green all of a sudden, <laughs> right. you know, and we told that story of what that was all about uh, in in the episode, so that was kind of fun. That is pretty cool. So. Before you even get on a plane to go out to Parts Unknown to shoot Muscle Car of the Week, you really don't have much of an idea of what you're going to be shooting until you get there. And then, No, oh, I do. do. I, I, we have all the cars locked in advance. Oh, okay. Um, and, I, and I have notes written about every one of them. All right. And a lot of times they'll provide um, VINs of the cars so I can research oh, them. Oh, okay. And, and a lot of these cars have been around for a while. You just don't unearth a, a Hemi Cuda convertible. So, you know, the VINs of all those cars are known, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, so if I research a particular VIN, chances are the story already exists. You know, okay. it's documented somewhere and I can <clears throat> pull a few notes from that. 
uh, I write a few notes and then go out and, and shoot the show. Um, it happens, though, that, for example, like I said, we had a couple of cars fall out uh, and another one was suggested on site. Hmm. Let's do this one in its place. You know, that kind of thing. So then then you got to become, it's like, well, do you guys know anything about this car? <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> and there, um, we don't have the luxury of time to be able to say, well, uh, give me give me three days to call somebody or oh, yeah. uh, look this one up right. or call a previous owner. Because I've done that already, too. I've talked to guys who've owned these cars, you know, previously and, and gotten stories from them. Cool. So... Uh, luckily one of the cars that got thrown in, um, is kind of a last minute deal was a 2016, uh, Shelby GT 350. So that's the flat plane. Crank oh yeah. Car, the new one. And, um, the nice thing about that is it doesn't have a history, that particular car. It's brand new, right. you know, and I think this one had 40 Holy miles. Holy shnikes. On. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, then it's more about. You know, and being modern, that was another race in the hole because there's product literature online and, you know, whatever. Right, you can right. find something to say about a, a, a new car. So we shot the stand-ups and the footage, and then it's my mission to find something interesting to say about that car that road and track already didn't say or Motor Trend right. or, you know, Ford mm-hmm. uh, to, to put it into the context of the collection and all the rest I got of it. You. So. I got you. We saw uh, a pretty cool picture of Kelly holding the keys to a, was that a, a Daytona or a, a Superbird? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a Daytona. Yeah, yeah you did see. Yeah, that, that was that uh, was righteous. Ke- Kelly came out on this one. Yeah, and she actually drove a few of them, partially out of necessity and partially because it was just kind of a fun opportunity. Yeah. Um, the the guys that that manage the cars are normally the ones behind mm-hmm. the wheel. Um, but this go around, they have so much going oh, yeah. on that they're like, yeah, we kind of need some help. So Kelly came out and, uh, and actually drove, right a few on. she drove that Daytona. She drove another, an AAR and, uh, a couple others. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because, you know, we try to do a, a burnout with uh-huh. each car at the end or kind of somewhere in the show. And there's really no reason for that. And and but the but how that all started was in the first few episodes we got some driving uh, shots and some of the earliest episodes we didn't even drive right. the cars because I didn't know how much latitude mm-hmm. we had. You know, these things are irreplaceable mm-hmm. cars. And uh, a viewer wrote in and he's like, you know, you could drive them, you know, or you know, I dare you to do a burnout <laughs> kind of thing. So I told one of the guys that owns the collection, and I said, hey, you know, did you see that, you know, kind of half joking, did you see that comment we got that some guy's like, you know, you should do burnouts? He's like, yeah, go for it. Right on. I said, really? And he's like, no, no, go ahead. That's what they're for. You know, you're not going to hurt it. And if you do, you know, what are you going to hurt? An old set of tires right. or a clutch or something. And yeah, Oh, go for I love it. that attitude. Love it. It was a great attitude. So then we're like, all right, well, yeah. So we've done them every single time, basically, except for like maybe one or two that have that are like way right. over the top. So um, Kelly actually did a couple burnout shots, and uh, one one is it is on the burnout scale. It's it's kind of down towards mm-hmm. the bottom, not because of her ability, but because I think it was that Daytona is on a set of like early 90s vintage uh bfg radial tas that are as hard as my head plastic (laughs) yes so they spin they don't make any smoke they don't do anything so it's just kind of a Mm non-dramatic burnout you know and and that's kind of another funny thing that's happened in the past sometimes we shoot the burnout shots at uh uh 120 frames per second video oh so we can slow it down and make it look uh-huh. dramatic. Um, but sometimes that stops the motion and it looks like the tire isn't spinning very fast. Ah, uh, okay. And, and we had a situation where it was that uh, orange uh, 69 Mustang kind of Trans Am catalog car. It was a race car that they used to develop the over-the-counter yeah. Trans Am parts program. 
And this thing's got to be 600 horsepower. And it did just a hellacious burnout across parking lot. But we shot it at this high mm. frame rate. And you can't tell. Really? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It looks like the tire's not even spinning. So, and, and there's all this smoke. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, you guys just ruined the clutch on that. Uh. It's like, mm, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, that's kind of not what happened. Oh, the clutch is tip top. But sometimes some of these cars are on old yeah. tires and um, you know, partially you don't want to you don't want to lean on them real hard because you don't want to blow right. a tire and hurt the You're car. Right. That um, would be unfortunate. It would. So another another sneak preview. A lot of a lot of yeah, teasers this time. Yeah, man. For, for muscle car that we fans. People got to tune in, uh, get the scoop here. Yeah. Well, this this was a heck of a car. It's a it's a 67 67 68 GT500 KR um, that has like s- less than 6,000 miles on oh it. Oh boy, you got to be kidding me. At, and and we think it's on its original Ooh. tires. So they're like, yeah, we're not really going to burn these to the ground. <laughs> and, and I just moved the car. I did a little a little drive with it and uh, just kind of getting off the brake. Uh, it's like, oh, you geez. know, they spun and... And they left black powder oh, on the man. ground, you know, just to oh, jeez, <laughs> like, like coal. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. Like, or organic black. Yeah, carbon they're trying to go back the to the earth from whence they came. Yes. Yeah. So that was that car. The clock still worked and everything. I mean, That's it was trippy. It was, I love it. What a time yeah. capsule that is. Yeah. So I I don't know yet when that episode will come out. So you just got to watch. And we do. We all watch. And now we have our yeah, good uh, so. Muscle Car of the Week uh, Facebook group. That's pretty cool. A lot of people showing their cars yeah, off right. on that. That was just kind of a fun thing. That um, So if you go to the Facebook page, uh, Muscle Car of the Week has a page. And, and one day this window popped up on Facebook and it said, you need to start a group <laughs> that's linked to your page. And I went, I don't know what that's all about. I mean, I certainly know what Facebook groups are. But I thought if somebody has something to say, why don't they just say it on the page? You know, I didn't really make a whole lot of sense to me why you'd need mm-hmm. both so i pushed the button and put a picture up and launched the muscle car of the week facebook group and we had a couple hundred people sign up pretty yeah. quickly and uh a friend of ours named frank uh i believe it's pronounced yeah. Zukowski. frank's got a gto yes, a blue he one he's uh, a, a big supporter of mm-hmm. the show and is always very kind to us uh he posted in the group hey you know Thanks for the ad. Love the show. And, and somebody's like, what show? Uh. So it was interesting that the Muscle Car of the Week official group is um, reaching people that have no idea what the show mm. is. So now we're trying to introduce them, you know, back to it so that they know what the deal I is gotcha. there. So. I gotcha. Yeah. You can't assume that, you know, just because it's got the name or the logo, somebody that's, knows what it is. That's a good point. That's a good point. I liked your... Uh... Your minute to win it video today too, showing off what you got going in the shop today. That was that was pretty cool. Uh, yeah, right. Thank you. That was on the Facebook page again, and we. Uh, I know I say this a lot, but there is so much activity going yeah. on in the shop yeah. right now that it's hard to stay on top of the of the horse. <laughs> so uh, again, Ben was shooting, and I said, "Hey, I, let's just. This is going to be kind of chaotic, but let's just kind of take a lap of the mechanic shop and see what's going on." And uh, that duster that that got brought in, that yeah. 74, which you used to yeah, have, I guess. Yeah, had a 74. A 74 yeah, duster. It had a lot less sheet metal on it than that one did. Oof. Oof. <laughs> it, was, it, it, was, it became Ooh. a natural lightweight. <laughs> 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 nice. Well, this one's a pretty solid car. It's, it's, it's uh, blue, and it's got a 340 in it, and um, four-wheel disc brakes. Oh, boy. And uh, a few updates here and there. And, and the customer just, it had a V-belt system on it. He wanted a serpentine drive and it didn't stop very well. So we brought it to us to mm-hmm. fix a few things and, and we've added a few elements to it. We didn't really touch anything on the mm-hmm. outside. Um, and it's on a set of Kragers, a really nice set nice. of Kragers. I mean, it just looks so right mm-hmm. on that car. Uh, so right now we have the blue 74 duster that was in that video mm-hmm. today. We also have a blue 73 Duster 340 that's in the metal shop getting metal worked. And we also have a blue 73 Cuda Ooh. in the shop, also a 340 car. Wow. So three 340 cars within a year of each other that are all the same color Sweet. blue. It's Chrysler yeah, mania unusual. out there. I love it. 
Well, it really is. And, and Kelly's over there driving a Dodge yeah. Daytona. And, you know, what? I don't even know what's happening over <laughs> here. But finally, we're getting some some strong Mopars in the shop, which it is good. It is good. good. Uh, uh, that Cuda is a very nice car. It's uh, Again, it's blue with a blue interior and a white vinyl top. Mm. And the outside's been very well detailed, detailed, but underhood was still kind of original mm. and kind of greasy. So it came to our shop f- to have the engine pulled, degreased, detail the bay. Some of you're familiar yes, with, I am. you know, that yes, kind I of am. Same If thing. you need any tips about that, I got them. <laughs> <laughs> right. How to, how to mess yes, stuff right. off. Tin foil, Kevin. Yeah. Tin foil. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a great it tip, totally you know, is. and. and the difference in the Mopar world is the underhood engine bay is all the, body. Oh color. yeah, that's right. So your GTO is mm-hmm. black. This one, um, so not only is it, it's a little extra um, complexity because you got to get good coverage. I mean, they had nice paint on yeah. the inside, uh, and it's got a match yep. too. And I, yeah. I have no idea when the outside of the car was painted, so we're at the blend. Oh, sure, you know, sure. Get some paint match action mm-hmm. going on, so. But that's pretty cool. And then we're going to regasket the motor and detail that and repaint it Sweet. and everything. And yeah. Should be great. nice to clean. Good clean runner. I like it. Yeah. And then the uh, the Oldsmobile that we showcased with the, um, we showed the exhaust system coming together, which is, I thought was that pretty is, neat. You know. That was neat. How do you got that pipe at, right after the H kind of bending up a little bit to hug the, the floor to give you some extra ground yeah. clearance? Yeah. I didn't know how well that came across in the video. I, but I could uh, tell what what he was talking about, and when he got, got that side shot, you could kind of see you could see it. Yeah, it's slick. So that's that's John Moss, our mm-hmm. fabricator, one of them. And John John worked with us four and a half years ago, and and left the shop and came back a few months ago. Right so on. it's it's good to have him back. He's uh, he, he's a good guy, very talented mm-hmm. fabricator, as you could see by his oh, work on that yeah, exhaust that was system. Pretty. Yeah, and uh, it's all TIG welded up now and finished and uh, neat stuff. And, and, you know, most people don't think the way he does. Mm. They think, oh, it's an exhaust pipe. It's going to go, you know, it might bend left or right. right. But they don't up think about down, the yeah. three-dimensional bends unless it's going over the axle right. or something. Right. So, And I've been hesitant about showing very much of that particular car because it is a beautiful uh, 66 442. It's dark green with a black vinyl yeah. top. Uh, it's got a white headliner. Really? From the factory. Ooh. Yeah, it's sweet. It is sweet. Um, and then we put an LS3 in it, which is going to make a lot of people really upset. <laughs> yeah. As a matter of fact, it is. <laughs> well, I mean, but actually the owner put the LS in it and just didn't finish I, the job. Gotcha. He's, uh, He's not as flexible as he once was, so he's like, "Look, I got the the hard part done. You guys mm. just get the connect the dots and finish mm. it off." Uh, but I told him, I said, "Are you sure about this? Because this is, you know, it's a one owner family sixty six four four two, you know, old four hundred four speed car." And he's like, "Look, I this car, it's been in my family for fifty years, and." It's leaked all 50 of those years, <laughs> being an old V8. And he said, and I want to go fast. So uh, he said, so that's why we're doing this. And he goes, don't worry. You know, I got the old 400 on the stand and I got the mm-hmm. four speed. He said, I got the original shift handle. He goes, I got every single part that's mm-hmm. ever come off this car. So I'll go drive mm-hmm. it around and go fast. And if I don't like it or somebody wants to restore right. it or my kids or whatever, they can put it all right and back. leak all over so, town. <laughs> i told him there is a way to get an old v8 to not leak i'm not sure what it is right. but I'm sure there's gotta happening. be a way uh yeah well any old v8 you know so um he's now uh you know getting ready to uh to get that thing back and uh we counted today because our mission again was to do an undoable engine uh-huh. swap so Tr- trevor was telling me because uh, he was doing all the wiring and the ECM and all that jazz, we think we've drilled four holes in the okay. car, and that's the extent of our. Uh, I think that's acceptable. Our footprint, I, I no. think so. Yeah, and, so. and the fact that he still has the original four hundred and the original four speed, and he has has it saved, I think that can really squash a lot of arguments as to the LS swap. I mean, it's all undoable, like like you said. Right, yeah, it's got a, a you know a bolt-in Curry nine-inch rear end. He's Sweet. got the original, 
Uh, he's got the... He put a whole set of Global West control arms on it and put the originals in a box. That is going to be a runner. Yeah, Willwood brakes with a Hydra Boost, you know, a Hydra Tech mm-hmm. unit on it. So right it's uh, it's going to be a heck yeah. of a car. Looking looking real forward to, to driving it and, and getting it sorted yeah. out. Uh, probably won't need much, but it's... Um, it's Think cool. maybe we'll get a feature video out of that? Uh, you know, I, I would love to, but again, I got to get that message out there like right mm. away that this is an LS right. swap, but we have all uh-huh. the stuff, you know, because it is such an incendiary topic <laughs> these days. It can be. And I, and I don't need the, the negative energy coming uh-huh. in. You know, you'll have equal amount of people that say, that's mm-hmm. awesome, and you guys do great work, and, you know, it's a logical choice. And then you'll have the olds guy, and I don't blame right. them. You know, the olds guys will be like, you ruined mm-hmm. the car. And, and honestly, I think that a lot of the people that say you've ruined the car – maybe don't have firsthand experience about what something like this is like mm-hmm. to drive. It's good. Point. Um, but at the same time, it's a numbers matching, yeah. you know, four, four, two. That's really yeah. nice. So I, I probably wouldn't have made that choice <laughs> in the beginning to, to go with an LS. I could see, yeah, I, I could see the, you've ruined the car argument having some validity. If he just got rid of the original numbers matching drive line. If he pulled it and said, yeah. yeah, I'm going to sell this to finance my LS swap. That's a little, right. that's, that's a little touchy yeah. there, right there. You got, you got to yeah, ruffle that, some that, feathers, but, uh, that I wouldn't support, yeah, but he did, I'm, he did it right. He did the right thing. He saved all that, you know, valuable stuff. And, you know, I, I, I'm a, I'm an original engine, you know, a, a correct engine kind of guy. I, I like to see that, but, I'm not going to, you know, poo-poo on someone for doing what they want with the car. And this guy, I mean, I, I I don't have any really big problems with with the direction he's taking this thing. Well, it's because it's not a Pontiac. Well, even, yeah, even <laughs> if it was, even if it was, I, I would like to see, if, if it were a GTO, I would like to see, you know, a, a real Pontiac engine in there. I mean, and there's all right. So yeah, let's turn the tables a little bit and say, this guy comes home with a 67 mm-hmm. GTO numbers matching four speed uh-huh. car. And he yanks the Pontiac engine out to put an LS. You would be completely out of your shorts. <laughs> if he got rid, if it was an original <laughs> engine and he got rid of it. Yeah, I would yes. be. Well, again, not getting but rid he, of it. Here's versus the thing too. Making the change. Here's the thing too. You want to drive your car. If, if it were going to be a show mm-hmm. queen and be trailered, then there, there would be no reason to do a swap at all. But if you if you want to drive it, this one and this one was close. Was it really? Ugh. Yeah, it is if, super if nice. You, <laughs> but if you want to drive it around and not worry about, say you got you got a, an original Ram Air Four engine in there, and if you want to mm-hmm. drive it, number one, a, a Ram Air Four is, is not going to be super friendly on the streets um, with the rear gear and 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 the high cam, the high lift cam. If you can drive your car around and have it be it be street friendly by putting an LS in there, but keeping the original stuff for the value sake, you know what? It's not a horrible decision in my in my opinion. No, um, and again, we've done both sure. in in all directions, and it's like the driving experience that these LS platforms provide mm-hmm. when properly done, because we've we've certainly seen our share of people that take a junkyard 5.3 and throw it mm-hmm. in a car and don't do anything about gears uh-huh. or suspension or tuning. Um, and they're just as miserable as, yeah. you know, the 307. Right. Cause nothing matches out, up. You know, whatever. And, and it sucks. Yeah. Right. But when you get it right. So two examples, we just published a video series on that 71 C10 mm, pickup that was truck. My next topic <laughs> conversation. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 Well, so that, that, that truck is right as rain, man. It, uh, it's a Chevy and a Chevy and the yeah. LS guys don't seem uh-huh. to care about right. that, you know, and, and a 71 350 was kind of a pooch sure. and his actually was not a numbers matching mm-hmm. truck. And the value of a C10 yeah. is certainly substantial, but it's not like a, you know, a Ram Air 4 right. GTO. Right, right, right. So his whole deal was, he said, look, I have a, uh, like an 08 or 09 Silverado and I'm going to sell it and I'm going to drive this black truck every day. He said, I have a Harley and I got this truck and that's it. So it's got to be that's right. awesome. So 
It, yeah, it's totally yeah. cool. So we said, yeah, you know, we're totally up for it. So um, the mechanical team went to town on it, and Trevor and Tyler did the, the you know, the vast majority of the work. Um, our paint department did a few updates that were not featured in the story um, on the the video mm-hmm. series, just because it it didn't really blend a whole a whole well. But this guy, obviously, uh, like I said, he's a a Harley fan mm-hmm. as well. And, and kind of his version was he kind of wanted a Chevy, an earlier Chevy version of the Harley Davidson pickup okay. truck. So he asked us to letter the tailgate letters in orange oh, right on. and, and do a couple of orange details. And, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know how much I can get into telling people that we're building a Harley mm-hmm. truck, you know, without the Harley people calling me or something. <laughs> so we didn't really get into that. Uh, <laughs> They like to profit on their stuff, and they like other people not to profit. Oh, yeah. Their stuff. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty funny about that. <laughs> yeah, so th- that thing um, got it all together, and uh, engine trans, the gauges, cooling system, interfaced it with the stock AC system, yeah. got all that working. And he's got, I think he's got over five thousand miles on it. Nice. Now. He has dr- driven it like crazy. Yes. Yes. And, and loves it. Yeah, and the only other thing that we ended up doing, and it, unfortunately it happened last week while we were shooting Muscle Car of the Week, is we did a uh, a wheel, tire, and brake upgrade because he's like, yeah, I need this thing to stop better because it goes fast. Uh, so we did a um, just basically new calipers on the original style front uh-huh. disc brakes. We added a rear disc brake setup that used GM Take parts uh, and a Hydro Boost Sweet. again. And he called me today and uh, he said, look, he goes, I got to thank you for steering me into this Hydro Boost thing. Because when he asked, I said, well, what's the goal? You want to stop better or do you want the wheels to, you know, to, to look nice? Is this an appearance thing or is it uh-huh. a performance thing? And he's like, well, I really need to stop better. And I said, well, then leave all your brake hardware and just put a Hydro Boost on it and it's going to stop a million uh-huh. times better. And he's like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm putting new calipers on and, and I want to put different wheels on it. And I said, I just want you to know that you don't need okay. to do that because the hydro stops everything. And, and he's like, well, you know, and he couldn't get it through his, mm-hmm. his head that, you know, he's thinking everybody thinks brakes are at the four corners and, and really the, the brakes are under uh-huh. the hood. So he called me and he's like, oh, I got to thank you for telling me about that hydro boost system. He said, I don't care what it would have cost. The way that thing stops is phenomenal. Nice. So now, now he's got awesome acceleration, far more than the tire will handle. He's got the overdrive mm-hmm. transmission. He's got the fuel injection that starts every morning. He has awesome brakes, and he's getting twenty three or twenty four. Get out people. of here! Yeah, yeah. With, all summer with the air, AC on and the stereo crank. That's amazing. And it is tr- truly his daily driver That's, for real. Oh, you have no idea how happy that makes me. I mean, ah, oh, I love. I wish. Oh, I wish. I had a <laughs> sweet old daily driver, except this big gold paperweight that's behind me. <laughs> You'll uh, get there. Yeah, it, it will. It will get there. It will get there. It's yeah. taking a little longer than I anticipated, but it'll it'll get there. And that's well, fine. the other neat one in LS land because we just we do so much of it. Right. We finished up that '69 Corvette Roadster. Oh yeah. And the Roadster was uh, originally a small block, four-speed car, and the original engine was long gone. It's a '69. Mm. That's a valuable car. I mean, it's those yeah. are those are cool those are hot cars. items. Yeah, yeah. And the the owner's like, no, I want an LS um, and a six-speed. And you know, we said okay. And you know, the first thought is, well, these are Corvette parts. You know, an LS three is a Corvette engine, and a right. A, T56 was a Corvette transmission. You know, why not? Finally, it makes sense. Yes. You know? <laughs> Full speed ahead. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we kind of got into it, and, you know, we were discussing the project. And, and as you know, when you get into the later model Corvettes, you sit you sit in those cars, like, all the way in the car. And when you reach for that shifter, it's almost at, like, eye level because the seats oh are so low. Yeah, and right. The, the tunnel, tunnel is so high. Because those transmissions are so big. Uh, and for us to get the six speed in the 69 car, the engine fit no problem. Mm-hmm. The LS dropped right in to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. But we had to make a trans tunnel, and a cr- the cross member does not come out of that car. It's welded in, it's one oh, thing. Boy. 
So we had to cut that out and make a new one and support the transmission properly Hmm. and then make it feel like you were sitting in the car and not reaching up to get the shifter. Yeah. So it wasn't without its, uh, its challenges either. We had, you know, a sensor go bad uh, right towards the end of, of delivery, you know, while we were driving it around and, and just because sensors are, are kind of the cheapestly made thing of all these systems, you know, Holly doesn't make the sensors that are in the car and GM doesn't make them either. They're, they're sourced by some third party company. Right. So, um, as we do our drivability and tuning, we make sure all that stuff works right. But the customer came in, uh, to our shop to pick the car up. And this is a, it's the LS3 485 horse rating car, which that, that engine actually makes more power than it's probably right on 500 with the six speed. And Trevor took him around the block and showed him, you know, what was what. And he jumped in it and drove a thousand miles to mini Minnesota. Wow. That uh, day that was his first drive. Right said, on. Thanks a lot guys. And, and, and off he goes, off he goes. Sunset. And, and we had this whole car apart, you know, and he sent us a message. Hey, made it. No problem. You know, it's a little loud, but other than that, I'm great. So, nice. yeah. Uh, so that that kind of re- reliability can be had, you mm-hmm. know, with these modern engines because again, all the ceiling surfaces are O-ringed, and, right? You know, you don't have to worry about a lot of this stuff. Yeah, uh, just you know, better design and more more precise tolerances and all that good stuff that helps. Yeah, and that Corvette is now the header image on our website on the VA TV show website. Um, and if you think about it, this. You know, like I said, give or take 500 horsepower LS3 with a six-speed manual. And that car's got a 410 gear in it. And wow. it weighs nothing. And it was like, even with the 410, it was about 2150 on the highway RPM in six gear. Oh, so oh yeah. You got the overdrive. Yeah, okay. yeah. So it's still getting killer mileage. And oh my gosh, does it get there quick. Quickly. <laughs> yeah. That thing Whoa, is a rocket. Four tens. Holy shnikes. That's Yeah. That's that's got some bite. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, goodness. and and it, again, the good thing was it kind of didn't have bite. You know, the tires let go. Yeah. You know, but you could spin the tires in almost every gear on that thing if you wanted to. Holy cow. Uh and then you open the hood and it had the red Corvette. It was a red car with the red Corvette right. LS3 engine covers right. and everything. And it just looked like it belonged. And in fact, you know, you have a car like that, everywhere you go becomes a mini car show. And I was getting lunch at a restaurant, and uh, there's some dude working on the building, and he's like, "Hey, you know, can I can you pop the hood on that?" And I said, "Sure," and I opened the hood, and he's like, "Wow, that's really sweet." He had no idea that it was a modern engine, right? Because the not that we made it look vintage, but just uh, you made it the look whole right. package. Yeah, yeah, the whole package was clean, and uh-huh. a '69 Corvette is still a very contemporary design. So he thought it was like maybe something from the '90s, you know? Oh my goodness. And he goes, yeah, I got a 67 427 car at home. And I'm like, well, this is a 69. And he's like, you're kidding me. <laughs> you know, he just, he was so enthralled by the, the wow. engine. He just didn't, didn't register. So. Right. Oh, that's pretty slick, man. Uh, I'm still an original engine guy, but that's okay. But I, I, I definitely see the upside of an LS swap in a vintage car. It cures a lot of ills. Yeah, it does. Uh, but, you know, you could take your Pontiac 400 and, and yeah. put a throttle fuel injection system yeah. on it and have the best of both worlds. Yeah, so, true, 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 true. That, that's what we tell people also. We do a yeah. lot of that also. Yeah, a long, a long time ago, um, my, I don't know if we talked about this on the show before, a friend of mine entered my car to be on that show on Velocity Garage. Oh, Club. yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, and, and, uh, and it made like the final... 30 submissions and they needed 16 right on for that for that year's episodes and the host Joe Zolper came out and he looked at the car and pretty much all it needed was an engine mm-hmm. i mean everything else in the car is pretty much done and he's like yeah i mean we really need more than you know just an engine to do on this thing really they it, couldn't throw 10 more things at it well he he did say you know we could probably just you know blow the whole car apart and make it look like it's been sitting like this forever. I'm like, I, I I'd be okay with that. <laughs> and, uh, but it's but on he, their dime, I'm assuming. Yeah, I guess <laughs> and then he also, cause, cause none of the, no, at that point, none of the machine work was done on the car, on the engine. And, um, he's like, God, so they, that, they, that would blow the budget. It was just, we need more, but 
doing an engine rebuild will pretty much eat up the whole budget we have, which is like five grand. And he's like, would you uh, be would you be up for like an LS swap in there? I'm like, yeah, no, no, sorry, <laughs> I can't. And that's when you quickly just backed yourself out of the whole <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, like I can't. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he was excited because they hadn't done a GTO on that show before. But he just got through looking at a 64 GTO. Mm. And wouldn't you know it, that's the one they ended up using. They put an LS in it? No, but it, it didn't need it. It didn't need an engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It needed everything else. Well, but... and this is what I tell people there. Would you want a five grand LS swap? Probably not. On, on that type of show, week, which yeah. is a ch- churn and burn kind of thing. You probably yeah. wouldn't. You'd be redoing it. It'd still be a part now. You know, two years later, you'd still be going through details on it. So that was the right decision. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That hurt. It, it, the, the prospect of having the car back on the road was was pretty powerful. Yeah. But, but I'm then like, eh. you'd have to go to your, your local GTO club meeting with yeah, the hood Yeah, I had that in my head. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to answer to a few people about that. Yeah, you sell out. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I see how you are. Exactly. It's like, you're not in the club <laughs> anymore, man. Like, yeah. Come on, guys. I just wanted to drive my car. Yeah, the Chevy Club meets Thursday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You're dead to us now, Chevy boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Good Lord. All right. Well, the suspense is killing me here, really, about what year did Buick put Turn signals as standard equipment. <laughs> is it is it killing you, Kev? Is it? It's hurting. It's I'm hurting. All right. So, I asked, yeah, what year did Buick put turn signals as standard equipment in their cars? And Kevin said 1947. And in the grand scheme of things, you're not that far off. It was 1939. Oh wow! So if you take World War II yeah. out of that, yeah, exactly, because they didn't produce they... cars from right. 40 to 44. Yeah, yeah. Only off by a couple yeah. years. Yeah, so yeah, so I guess you're pretty much right on. So congratulations, win. you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like uh, common distort. core math you used right there. That's new math. I did, I did. I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of a gun. Uh, wow. All right, I get the big L. So the question I, I lofted your way was what was the first year of the American V eight advertised? at 400 horsepower and i guess kind of a bonus would have been what was it and you guessed the 1965 chevrolet 427 yeah um and unfortunately that is not the correct (laughs) answer Uh, probably for Um, many reasons well and if you you know kind of get into it the um 63 galaxy 427 Mm. was rated at 425 so i was ahead of that Shoot. and and 63 dodge uh 410 cars mm-hmm. you know 426 wedge cars made 410 horsepower. right uh believe it or not 1958 what? mercury super marauder what 430 cubic inch dual quad 10 and a quarter to one wow 400 horsepower engine that was uh, 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 a super trick piece. It was the, uh, it was an MEL Mercury Edsel Lincoln oh, yeah. platform engine, and it was the first year for it. And they they made it available in in all the Mercuries basically that year. So there are wagons out there with the Super Marauder, uh-huh. and there's uh, um, convertibles and turnpike cruisers and really cool stuff. And if you get bored and you jump on eBay, you type in Mercury Super Marauder. It had a cast air cleaner over the three two barrels. Oh, and cool. uh, I said dual quads before. It was a three two barrel setup. Um, and this cast air cleaner today is selling for about sixty five hundred <sighs> bucks. Whoa! Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, a trick engine for an even tricker question. God dang it! Uh-huh. <laughs> nice, nice. Here I am. Oh, it's going to be the muscle car era. <laughs> Doofus. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I mean, again, great logic, and we don't think right. that you know '50s cars made that kind of power. No, but a I... handful of them did, and that's why we have muscle cars today because somebody right. had to do it first. That's true. That's true. The big cars had big power. I wouldn't call a '58 Mercury a muscle car. No, no, I would. I wouldn't either. I mean, it doesn't really fit the the genre. It's not a midsize, right? But a big fast sled, man. Big fast car. Yeah, I definitely call it a big fast car. Just not a muscle car. 
Right on. Right on. All right, man. Well, this has been fun. Totally. Totally. We ma- Good managed time. to jam another hour or so in of uh, non-prepped material. <laughs> yeah, right? How do we do this? <laughs> uh, we're just naturals at this, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsors Listeners will be don't have to answer the sponsors that. will be beating a path to our door pretty soon. When they hear all this That's right. good stuff. Yeah, companies that make mute buttons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Whatever it takes. <laughs> nice. Two of them. Yeah. <laughs> all right, man. Well, hey, it's been fun, and uh, thanks for the time. And uh, next time, I, I promise I will do some additional prep and uh, make it that much more interesting. Right on. But uh, but you get the word because uh, right. Sue Generous was kind of kind of a stretch for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a stretch to hear. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> All right. Well, you can listen to V8 Radio on our website at v8radio.com, the TuneIn Radio app, uh, iTunes, Google Play, or the Stitcher app, which is kind of cool. They've picked us up, which is nice, and that allows you to kind of subscribe, and the Stitcher app will let you know, kind of like iTunes, when the next podcast is available, and you can uh, listen to it right on your phone or device or whatnot. Uh, You can leave comments on our website or our Facebook page, for V8 Radio, if you've got it, if you take issue with any of this nonsense that we have spewed for the past hour or any of the other episodes, and uh, if you're new to the show, we, we welcome you to go back and listen to some of the previous ones uh, because you know we're getting we're running out of world's problems to solve because they've all been <laughs> solved on previous shows. Right on. <laughs> all right, well, we'll see you next time and uh, keep the shiny side up. <laughs>